Hello, today we will look at one of the causes of hyponatremia and that is CADH and that syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. It's abbreviated as SIADH. So it's syndrome of inappropriate ADH excretion. ADH is a hormone that will spare a lot of water. And when does it release? When the baroreceptors or the osmoreceptors in the brain sense that the concentration of the blood is low or that the blood pressure is low. So baroreceptors sense the pressure and osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus sense that the concentration of something is low in the, uh, in the blood. And that is usually sodium, for example, or potassium and any, any kind of osmols. So any kind of molecules that increase the osmolality of the blood. So antidiuretic hormone will now be excreted extensively, so very, very much. And therefore, this will then lead to hyponatremia. Why? Because uh, antidiuretic, it's against diuresis. It's uh, usually, the usual purpose is to spare a lot of water. And if you spare a lot of water, then the concentration of the, so the vol volume of the, uh, of the water content will build up, which means that the molecules of sodium will be then decreased. So the concentration will decrease if you have a lot of water in your blood. And actually there exists five types of syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. The first one is when we have continuously high amount of antidiuretic hormone. The second type, so that, that was type A. We have A, B, C, D, E. The type B is when we have a reset osmostat, it's called. That's when the, the threshold for the brain, so the hypothalamus or the baroreceptors is decreased. So for example, the hypothalamus will now sense this osmolality at the lower level. So usually it senses it by 280 milliosmol per kilogram. And then when the level of osmolality will be increased, so it will be more than that, then it will then release this antidiuretic hormone. But in reset osmostat, that will be in a lower level. So it will be sensed at the lower level. So, for example, uh, when we ha why is this happening? So, when the concentrations, when the osmolality increase in the blood, so it's more than 280, then the concentration is too high, and therefore the body thinks, okay, we need to dilute it, we need to add some water into this mix, so it's, uh, the concentration should be in the normal level, and that's usually around 280. And when it's more than 280, then the antidiuretic hormone is released, and it spares water in the kidneys, and therefore the concentration then uh, will be normal again. Again. And in, in this type B syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, the, the, the osmostat it's called, so that it's like a thermostat. It's like when you have, for example, fever, that's the same thing, that the, the thermostat will be increased. So the body thinks that oh, 40 degrees uh, of Celsius is normal. Of course, you don't feel it. You feel fever, but the, the body's thermostat was increased. Uh, the usual thermostat of the temperature is usually 36.5, for example, and, and it's usually below 37. And when the temperature increases in the, in the brain, then it can reach, the body temperature can reach 40 degrees, and then we call it fever. And the same thing here, that the osmostat, so the threshold where the antidiuretic hormone is released, that's decreased. And actually, it's working. So the whole system is working properly. Uh, everything is fine. The only thing is that the thermostat, so the osmostat is decreased, not 280. It's, for example, 270 or 260. And that was type B. The type C is actually when we have, for example, a persistently normal level. So the, the antidiuretic hormone level is in the normal range and we cannot change it. So regardless if we increase the pressure or we increase the concentration or we decrease it, doesn't matter what we do, the, uh, the level will stay the same and constant. Okay, what is type D? Type D is when the kidneys are damaged. So there, there are, there's a mutation, for example, in the V2 receptors of the kidneys and that will then lead to a very high concentration of urine. And we know that in syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, uh, this is very, very common, that the urine concentration is high. 
For example, the sodium concentration in the urine is high. The osmolality in the urine is very high. This is very, very common. And that, that's actually a sign of syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. So we can measure it in the laboratory. And if we see that this is true, that the, so the urine concentration of this sodium is high, then we, then, can, then we can be quite sure that it is syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. And it is not only type D that this happens. The only thing is that in type D, there is a mutation or there is a problem with the V2 receptor. And therefore, for it's high but usually uh, in type a b c d e in all cases we usually will have a high concentration of urine the only thing is that the cause is different in type a we had a continuously high antidiuretic hormone in type b we had a reset of osmostat in type c we had a continuously normal level but it's not changeable we cannot change it by um, by stimulating with pressure or with osmolality it's not changeable in type d it was a problem with the v2 receptors in the kidney and in type e what do we have here we have yes we have that the minor increase for example small increases of uh, of pressure will lead to big changes in antidiuretic hormone secretion. So for example, if we increase the pressure, then the antidiuretic hormone drops. Or if we decrease the pressure, then the anti antidiuretic hormone increases. But suddenly, very, very large changes due to small, small changes. And that's, that's also not normal. Okay, and now we will deal with the causes. Which causes uh, do we have? Why, why do we get this syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone? It sounds, this, this disease sounds, or well, it's not really a disease, it sounds very, uh, very um, uh, strange or very um, hard to grasp. Uh, the, the, the way to remember is that it's, it, it's a disease that is affecting antidiuretic hormone and anything that can affect that will cause them this syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. So it's inappropriately increased antidiuretic hormone. It can be caused by many things. For example, it can be caused by any central nervous system disease. For example, you have an infection in the brain or you have trauma to the brain or you have bleeding into the brain or you have tumors in, in the brain. You have a psychiatric disease, a psychosis anything that related to the central nervous system so to the brain you also can have uh, tumors in the lung for example small cell carcinoma there's also hiv infection can cause this also drugs many many drugs i will not list them all but i will mention some of them for example haloperidol can cause it amitriptyline we have carbamazepine we have chemotherapeutic drugs like vincristin vinblastin we have usual drugs that we use every day non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs we have opiates there are certain methotrexate immunomodulatory drugs like methotrexate or imatinib so as you see, there are a range of medications that can cause this. Even cardiac uh, medications like amiodarone or antibiotics like ciprofloxacin. So as you see, I didn't mention all of them, but as you see, many of them can cause this. And this means that if you want to treat this disease, first of all, look at the medication. Take a list from the internet or from a book to textbook. Look at the list of medications that can cause this syndrome and then try to Remove that. If you remove that, then hopefully this, this syndrome will disappear. That's a very quick and easy step to do. And as we said, we had tumors in the, in the lung, small cell carcinoma, but we also have lung infection can cause it. Pneumonia, viral pneumonia or bacterial pneumonia or even tuberculosis. Surgery can cause it also, especially transphenoidal pituitary surgery and any type of surgery because the surgery is a big stressful event because stress can also cause this syndrome so when you have a lot of pain in surgery that can cause this syndrome so as you see this syndrome have many causes and therefore you need to find the cause and you need to attack that cause you need to treat that cause because that's the most effective way to treat any disease is to attack the cause of it and of course, if you don't know the cause, then you have a problem. But if you know it, then please try to solve that. But otherwise, we need to give sodium. And it's, and it's very important that you don't give 0.9% saline so, uh, solution. So it's a, 
it should be 3% saline solution. And why? Because if you give 0.9% saline solution and the urine concentration is so high, so the sodium is excreted so intensely, then actually you will get a worse hyponatremia. You will get a lower amount of sodium. So if you try to give sodium with a very diluted solution, with 0.9 is very diluted, it's too much water and less and too less of too too small amount of sodium then you have a problem because you will you will release a lot of sodium because the urine cons urine the kidneys are ex excreting a lot of sodium and therefore it's it's not working it's uh, you need to add 3% saline and actually i made some calculations so if you look at the calculations that i made here i've written them down here i want you to remember that 0.9 percent saline consists of about 154 millimole per liter and three percent saline consists of 513 millimole per liter and if we take a guy here who has a level in the blood which is around 120 that's pretty severe because we have uh, severe level is below 120 and if we have this guy 120 millimole per liter how do we know how much sodium he has in his in his whole body we need to uh, uh, calculate how much liter of water he has and we know that 60 percent of the body weight is is water so if we, if we have a guy who is 100 kilogram large and uh, and we have 60 percent of that is water then we have 60 liters of water and the concentration of sodium is 120 millimole per liter so every liter has 120 millimole then it means that 60 liter of water of this guy times 120 millimole will be 7200 millimole total body sodium okay and we know that the total body water is 60, as we said, 60%. So it means that 7,200 divided by 60 liters is 120 millimole per liter. Okay, and now, now we can manipulate these values. This is the, uh, an easy equation. If we add 3% saline, which consists of 513 millimole per liter, if we add 300 milliliter of this so you see it's a lot of factors here 300 milliliters of something that contains 513 millimole per liter how how do you know how much millimole we gave to this patient 530 millimole per liter we divided with 10 why do we divide it with 10 because then we get 100 milliliter it's only to to calculate it quickly in the mind 530 divided by 10 is 51.3 so 51.3 millimole consists in 100 milliliter if we give 300 milliliter of this then we take it times 3 so 51.3 times 3 is around 154 now we have 154 millimole extra in his body he had 7,200 plus this 154 is 7,354. And let's see if my calculations are correct. So see, yeah, 7,354. That's the new value. How much water does he have? He had 60 milliliter. Well, no, he had 60 liter. And now we added 0 0.3 liters. We added 300 milliliters. So now he has 60.3 liters of fluid. Now we take the new division and we take 7354 divided by by 60.3 and that will give us a new value of 121.96 so we had 120 in the beginning and now we have 121.96 that's an increase of 1.96 millimole and as we know the maximum amount we are allowed to increase per day is 6 millimole if you increase it more than that, you can get osmotic demyelinization syndrome, and that's very dangerous. So please don't exceed that, because the patient can die. But now, we increase it with 1.96 by giving 300 milliliter of 3% saline solution, and we give it usually in a bolus in 10 minutes. Bolus means that I just give it into the vein directly in 10 minutes. Then I measure the lab uh, the me measure the sodium by taking a blood sample I send it to the lab and then I see what level we have because this is only theory the body is more complex than this this is theory we, we will expect we, we will expect the 1.96 it can be more or it can be less 
depending on many, many factors. And one factor that we need to include in this is that the urine concentration is very high. The sodium is excreted very rapidly. And if we have in, in, in SIAD, so in syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic coma, we have a high concentration. And usually, if we have a very severe type of SIAD, then we have 308 millimole per liter of excretion. That means that 308 millimole of sodium of every liter of water is excreted. That means, how much did we give this patient? We calculated that we gave 154 millimole. But the kidneys is excreted, more, excreting more than 308 millimoles per liter. Okay, this means that 154 millimole will all be excreted. Everything. It's just a matter of time. This means that in half a liter of fluid, the total amount of 154 will be excreted. Why did I say half? Because we said in 308 millimole of sodium, one liter is excreted of water. But we only excrete 154 here, so it's half of it. Therefore, half a liter of fluid will be excreted. So, we, we excreted half a liter of fluid. And how much did we give this patient? 300 milliliters, so 0.3 milliliter. This means that we have a net loss of 0.2. And... The 0.2, now take a new calculation. Uh, 0.2 net loss, this means that we had a 60 liter of fluid in this guy previously. Now we only have 59.8. The new value that we need to divide is now 7200 divided by 59.8. And why did I say 7200? Why, did why didn't I say the new value of 7,354. It's because we said that we lost all sodium that was given. So in the beginning of the calculation, so the first calculation I made, I divided 7,354 divided by 60.3 60 because we added 300, uh, 300 milliliter to the 60 liter. But very quickly, in a couple of hours, he did not have 60.3 liters, he only had 59.8 liters. And he did not have 7,354, but he dropped to the original one, 7,200. And therefore we divide this new value, 7,200 with 59.8, and the new value will be 120.4. That's only an increase of 0.4 compared to 1.96 that we had before. So you see, the reality is that we increase the sodium quickly in the beginning and then with time it dissipates. It gets 0.9 and therefore it means that we continuously every day need to co control the sodium level and we need, to, we need to add sodium level. That's very important. And one more important thing is that, that if you treat the cause, for example, let's say one of the medications caused this syndrome, then what happens is if you correct it, if you stop that medication, then the sodium will get into the normal level, which means that you should watch out. You should not give so much sodium because it will auto-correct, we call it. Because it will correct automatically if you correct the cause of it. And therefore you don't need to give any sodium. So remember, the most important is to measure the sodium every two hours in the beginning. It's very important. Okay, and uh, this was a... This was the case of a guy who is 100, 100 kilogram. And if we take a case which is 60 kilogram, let's take a woman, we have 300 milliliter of this. We, say, we, we give the same volume. What we will get here is 0.67 increase in, in, in compared to 0.4. We are including the kidney excretion here. So 0.67 compared to 0.4. What's, what's the main message here? That if you have a larger body, of course you need a lot more of sodium then. So in, in, a, in a woman you should not be so aggressive as you are in a, in a big guy. And one more thing. We can decrease this urine concentration by a medication called loop diuretics. And this is furosemide, 20 milligram, 
twice a daily. So 40 milligram daily of furosemide can decrease this value. And let's say that we decrease this value by half. Before we had 308 millimole per liter excreted of sodium from the kidneys. Let's give it loop theoretic. We will decrease it to half, to 154. Now let's see the values. I will just tell the values because I have already calculated those. I don't want you to uh, go through the whole calculation again. So the same case of 100 kilogram um, guy who gives, we, we give 300 milliliter of this hypertonic salad solution. Instead of having an increase of 0 0.4 that we had in severe SIAD, now after loop theoretics, we will have an increase of 1.42. What's the main message? We have a three times more increase just because we gave loop theoretics, because we, de we decreased the concentration of sodium that is excreted and the whole formulas will be then different. The same with the woman. Uh, we had 0.67 increase in, in high concentration of urine and we have a 2.38 increase in a lower one when, after we gave loop theoretics. And that is, that is four times more. So you see, it's very important that you give sodium and you give a loop theoretic if the concentration of urine is too high and you cannot, you cannot really increase the sodium level. And then what we'll do, we said we gave boluses of 100 milliliters. We will only give it three times, these boluses. And if this does not work, then we, need to, uh, then we need to give it continuously. So we will make, for example, a continuous infusion to this patient of, let's say, 20 milliliter per hour of this 3% saline solution every hour, then it will be given. And we measure the sodium every two hours and we will see the change. And usually the symptoms disappear after four to six millimole of increase. So it's very important that we divide patients into those with acute types, chronic types. Acute are those that got this hyponatremia in less than 48 hours and those who got it and more than 48 hours, those are chronic. So also important that we divide the patient into those who have symptoms or not. And it's also important that we divide the patient into severity. So it means that we have mild, moderate or severe. Mild is when we have 130 to 134. Moderate is when we have 120 to 229. And, and severe is everything below 120. And why is this important? Because in severe cases, which means less than 120, and in those who have very severe symptoms, coma, seizures, respiratory failure. In these cases, we need to be more aggressive and especially in acute types, which uh, appears less than 48 hours. In these cases, we need to be aggressive. In chronic types, we need to be less aggressive because we can get this osmotic demineralization syndrome if we give a higher uh, increase than six millimole per day. But as we saw, it's, it's, not, so, it's not so easy to get to the six millimole per day if you have SIAD, if you have this high concentration of sodium in the urine, then, it's, then, you, need to, then you need to give so much to just compensate for this high amount of urine concentration. The other thing we can do is to restrict water. So we will not allow the patient to drink more than 800 milliliters of day, per daily. And the other thing we can do, of course, is that after the hospital, so when we treat it in the hospital and the level starts to become in the normal level, then we can uh, say that the patient needs to take oral salts. So, so he needs to be eating, for example, three grams of salts. These are tablets, so you, they're not table salts, it's tablet three gram and three times daily, and it's a total of nine gram. And this usually contains also 154 millimole. It's the, sa the same amount that we had in the 0.9 saline solution. And also, if this does not help, then oral urea can be, uh, be given. And this sounds very, um, yeah, not, not, so, not, so, not so tasty. It's actually very bitter, and we will give 15 gram uh, daily. And this, this is the last thing that we can do. So first in the hospital, we give infusions and then we give oral salts and we tell the patient to eat a diet high of proteins 
and a little bit higher of amount of salt. We know that salt is not good due to high blood pressure, but in this case, uh, when we're talking about life or death, because the patient can get cerebral edema and he can die, then blood pressure is not the most important thing to treat here. The most important to treat is the hyponatremia. So please add some salt uh, to this patient. And that's pretty much it. So in order to conclude SIAD, I want, to tell, I want you to remember that we have five types and depending, depending on which type we have, that, that's the only, uh, the, the only thing is that the mechanism is different. It's not really important for the treatment itself. Okay, and then we have causes. This is very important. We said that you need to take a list of the, all the medications that the patient has and please list those. And then we have surgery. If the patient had a surgery, then that can be the cause, especially transvenoid the pituitary surgery. Also, we had HIV infection. We had lung tumors, like small cell carcinomas of the lung. We also had uh, hip, uh, hormone deficiencies can be seen. For example, in hip, hypothyroidism or hypopituitarism, that can be, th these can cause this. And any type of central nervous system change like tumors, bleeding, trauma to the brain, psychiatric psychosis, for example, all this can lead to um, SIAD. And also not only tumors of the lungs, as we said, also lung infections like pneumonia and tuberculosis. So if you know the causes, then try to uh, treat the cause. If, if uh, you don't find it or if uh, it does not work, then you need to add uh, sodium. And as we said, add this 3% saline solution. Never add 0.9% because you will actually get the worst value. And that is because of the high urine concentration of sodium. And we, we made this whole calculation. So please calculate this at home. Remember that the total body water is 60% of your body weight. And remember that you only you take this liter of fluid that you have in your body and you take that times the concentration of the sodium that you have and then you get the total amount of sodium and then you can start to play with this and because the 3% saline contains 530 millimole per liter and the 0.9 only contains 154. That's it. Thank you very much for listening.